We might not get the result that we want and we make it mean something about ourselves. We're going around placing meaning on things that does not have meaning. Of course, the miracle says nothing has meaning until you place meaning upon it. So what are all the things that you're making mean something in your life that are just stealing your joy in the moment? Welcome to the Permission Slip Podcast, where I, empowerment coach, mindset expert, and holistic nutritionist, Carmen Oling, share with you the tools, conversations, and resources you need to write your own permission slip, take massive action, and become obsessed with your own life. Let's get started. Okay, friends, here we go. Part four of our four part series. I hope you have really enjoyed this series. I know it's been a lot of fun as I did that reflecting really to think about some, some different things, some out of the box things that aren't like meditate every day journal, you know, like they are different things that actually really helped me transform. And some of them I've continued to use, like I've shared. And so I hope that you really find these helpful. Um, So let's just dive into number four. And this is really paying attention to the words that you speak over your life. So the words that we speak are really powerful and it delivers energy out into the universe. And what we give out, we get back. So we want to be really careful. What kind of energy are we putting out? Because that's the kind of energy that we're going to get back. So these are the words that I want you to eliminate as we're moving through 2023. And let me tell you why. And let me tell you how to eliminate them. So it is the three words. I don't know. How often do you say, I don't know? How often do you say it to yourself? Say it to others? What kind of energy do the words, I don't know, what kind of energy does that breed? When we're just thinking about it right now, like for me, that builds the energy of lack of self-trust. That builds the energy of stagnation, overwhelm, insecurity, self-doubt. I don't know. No, I'm not saying that you have to know everything. Because that's something that also can hold us back. Thinking and acting like that we know everything and trying to learn everything really diminishes our gifts when we're not really operating in our zone of genius and doing what is on our heart and what we're being called to do in this world. So I don't know. To me, it also breeds indecision which causes anxiety, overwhelm, and it really erodes our self-trust. When we say, I don't know, it feeds imposter syndrome because then we start thinking, well, maybe I should know. And we start trying to figure it out. Or it's also leverage for your ego to begin the judgment and comparison cycle using old stories and conditioning. So you see, I don't know is not as simple as it sounds. And it's not something that I think we should be available for this year. I think we should let go of saying, I don't know. So I thought, well, what are the steps that I've used in my life to let go of saying, I don't know? And the first step, so there's two really simple steps that you're going to be able to implement. And the first step is changing your language. So what else can you say besides I don't know. And here, let's just stop BSing ourselves right now. Most of the time when we say, I don't know, we do know. We're just either one, scared of the answer, or two, we're not trusting ourselves enough and we think we're going to quote unquote get it wrong and that we'll somehow be judged for getting it wrong. But deep inside, we often know. We know the answer. So first there's that. Let's just stop BSing ourselves and say, we know the answer. It's just a fear state of judgment or getting it wrong or actually having to fucking do something. Yeah. Or like, what would the other person think? Maybe they're asking you just like a simple question. Like, what do you want to eat? Where do you want to go? What about this? What do you like? I don't know. What do you want to do? Fuck, I hate that. Don't you hate that when you want someone to really make a decision? Be decisive. Decisive people 
are experts. Decisive people are aspirational. Decisive people are those people that just really show up and shine and you look at them and you're like, dang, that person, they've got something. That's what we want to be. Let's claim that now, that 2023, that's what we're going to be. We're going to be fucking decisive. And if we don't know, honestly, let's go ahead and think about using some of this verbiage. Like, I'm excited to find out. Interesting. I'm excited to find out. Or, I'm not really considered that. I'm curious to discover more. Do you see how the energy switches? What if you asked me something? I just said, I don't know. Low, stagnant energy, right? And what happens? Again, the energy you put out, the energy you're going to get back. But if you ask me something else and I say, oh, interesting. I've not been exposed to that. Tell me more. I'm curious to discover. I'm excited to find out. Different. It's different. It's the energy of abundance and belief and curiosity. And that really transforms and fuels growth in your life. Or what if someone asked you to make a decision? This happens often for many of us. We've talked about decision fatigue on the podcast before, but that's where that you've been making too many decisions throughout the day. And then by the end of the day, or sometimes not even at the end of the day, sometimes it's midday. (laughs) And you're just like at a point where you can make no more decisions. And really, if you back it up, like the main way to, to prevent that is to be proactive and be planful and organized using my brain depth method and plan procrastination and all of that. So um, if you want to know more about that, we talk all about this in Flow Academy, by the way, and I teach you all of these practices. Um, if you want to know more, get on the wait list for April enrollment. It's in the show notes. But anyway, going back to uh, if someone asked you something, what if you just said, you know what? I would love for you to make the decision tonight, or I would love for you to make the decision this afternoon. And I just want to go with whatever you decide and see what we can discover together. Something like that. First of all, how good does that feel that you're not having to make a decision if for some reason you are at decision fatigue? And second of all, how good does that feel for the other person that you're letting them know that no matter what they decide, you're going to be on board with it and you're going to have fun with it. That would really could change things, right? So changing your language is step one. Now, step two is asking better questions. Ask better questions, you get better answers. The bridge to growth and transformation in your life is asking better questions so you can get better answers so that You can take aligned action in this season of your life towards the director, the trajectory that you are meant to go. It's when we don't sit and ask ourselves better questions that we're not being self aware. We're not increasing or raising our level of consciousness. And we're just on the treadmill of life day in and day out, often not even feeling, just going through the motions, not fully present. And we wonder why we can't reach our goals. So I wrote a list of 10 questions and you can just mark this spot on the podcast to come back to this. You can make note. I would love to hear which question resonates most with you and which you're going to try out in your life. So post it on Instagram, tag me, let me know which question. So what about this one at the end of your day? Did my actions today match my aspirations? And I know that's a yes or no question, but you can kind of dive more into it. How did I get distracted? What fueled my actions today? Maybe you had like a slam dunk fucking day. So you can replicate it. So did my actions match my aspirations? How about this doozy? What am I currently tolerating in my life? When I say the word tolerating, what type of energy do you feel in your body? Is it expansive? Is it abundant? Is it infinite? Is it energizing? Is it enthusiastic? Or is it just, eh? For me, it's the latter. 
So when I ask myself, what am I tolerating in my life? It's really looking at the areas of my life that I'm allowing things in that I'm no longer available for. So a follow-up question to that is, okay, now that I have this list of things that I am tolerating, because really we should be enjoying life every single day, every single moment, every single experience. And tolerating means that you're, it's happening over and over. So the follow-up is, what am I no longer available for? And then you decide and you take action. And that's the power of these questions. You can ask yourself these questions, but they're nothing unless you take action. What about this one? What are my current standards for reaching my goals in this season of my life? Do I even have standards? Do I need to change them? Have I had the same standards and I'm up leveling my goals, but I'm not changing my standards. So there's no fucking way that I'm going to reach them. Have I considered this? What new boundaries do I need to set in order for me to keep up these standards? Or how about the old elusive? What do I want? Sometimes that question's fucking hard, but it gets you thinking. And if you don't have anything, or maybe it's something superficial, what I suggest with this question is to start journaling on it. And with any of these questions, when you're sitting down for self-reflection, self-assessment, contemplation, take a moment to get aligned with yourself. On the last podcast, we, um, we did some exercises of how to get aligned with yourself, but align yourself in the moment. Take a few deep breaths, shake your body out, and then really sit down and be fully present. And with this question, what do I want? You can just start writing, free writing, or you can think about the different areas of your life. What do I want in my health? my business and career, my relationships, my free time, my personal growth, my significant other, an opportunity to give back, my community, my family and friends. What do I want in these areas of my life, my spirituality? What do I want? And then if you say something vague, remember the ego is vague, but your higher self, your intuition, your inner knowing, it's specific. So get as specific as you can with this question. What about this next question? What am I done apologizing for? You know, most of the time we're saying we're sorry. We're not actually sorry. It's just a conditioned response. Think about that. Or how do I want to feel every day? We often are not even aware of how we're feeling. Do you even know like a feelings word to use? And it's not going to be productive or successful. Because those are external motivations and we want to be intrinsically motivated. What if it was like energized, peaceful, enthusiastic, exhilarating, exhilarated? The next question is, over the last week, thinking back, where have I been the happiest? And a follow-up to that is, how can I replicate that more often in my life? What about, what am I in my life, am I currently ignoring that I know if I addressed it, it would really change things for me and move the needle? And then the last question is, really centered around often the old stories and programming that we have in our head with our relationship and with our environment. Often we perceive things and we make things mean, have a meaning that don't really mean things. And so the question is, what am I making this mean? We might read somebody's body language and make it mean something. Somebody's tone of voice We might not get the result that we want and we make it mean something about ourselves. We're going around placing meaning on things that does not have meaning. Of course, the miracle says nothing has meaning until you place meaning upon it. So what are all the things that you're making mean something in your life that are just stealing your joy in the moment? So those are some questions that you can ask yourself 
as we work to eliminate the words, I don't know. And of course, there's other words that you can work to eliminate too. But I found in my life that this, this phrase, this is huge for me. And I'm committing to no longer saying it. So I hope you join me in this commitment and follow the steps of changing your language and asking better questions. So again, I'm excited to find out. I'm curious to discover. Interesting. I have not been exposed to that. Tell me more. I would love if you made the decision. And I'm excited to see what we do. Want to have fun. So let's make sure to eliminate these words so we can let go of anxiety, overwhelm, imposter syndrome, not trusting ourselves. And we can fully step into what 2023 has for us. So thanks for listening. And thanks for listening to this series. I really want to hear a takeaway from you. So please tag me on Instagram, on your stories, at Carmen Oling. And until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and have some fucking fun. Bye.